Okay, so here, motivated by law and motivated by grace, the difference. If a person is motivated by the law, then he's under pressure. Then he's under pressure. It's always under pressure. And then if he's motivated by grace, there's no pressure. God is happy with me, what, what I'm doing. But when a person is motivated by the law, he's saying, Oh, am I doing well enough? Uh, oh, it's still a lot to do. And uh, is God happy with me? And there are no results. And it's always under pressure. But if it's under grace, then we say we serve God with joy and peace. You know, we can relax in God and say, I enjoy serving. The more we relax and enjoy serving, the more the people will appreciate the ministry. And the, when the people see that we are joyful, they are more motivated. They, they, will see, they will say, well, this is a joyful church. And they want to stay in a joyful church. And our ministry will be more fruitful. And then people will see our, you know, uh, uh, the life of God in our, in, our, in our life. And then they will say, well, this, these people are full of the presence of God. And we want to stay there. So there's no pressure because God is helping us. God is blessing us. And God is happy with what we do. And then when a person is motivated by the law, then he's filled with guilt. He is a lot of times has a lot of guilt. And, and then when this person is motivated by grace, then he's filled with forgiveness and acceptance. Then he knows that God forgives him and he knows that he's accepted by God. And then third point, uh, motivated by law has a sense of failure because he says, I'm not doing well enough. According to the law, I'm not perfect. And then they're afraid of punishment and they're afraid that God is critical of them. Now, the Bible does have warning about people who are not repentant. But actually, you notice that uh, when Jesus talks, when he uh, talks to the disciples, he, you know, he, uh, he did not use stern words. Now, he did, he did point out the sins. They say, you know, men of little faith. But then he says, when you have faith like a mustard seed, you can move the mountain. So God is telling them that, Jesus is telling them that, you know, I'm, even when you have little faith, I'm happy with you. So that's promise. Uh, instead of saying, wow, you have little faith, you will never grow up. Or when Peter, he was about to deny Jesus. Jesus had every reason to rebuke him and, 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 uh, you know, and punish him and criticize him. But Jesus did not do that. Jesus said, you know, I have already prayed for you. You know, he said that Satan wants to sift you, like sifting the weeds. And I have prayed for you so that you will not lose your faith. And then when you are restored, uh, strengthen your brother. So Jesus says, I have prayed for you so that you will not lose faith, even when he was about to deny Jesus. And then when you are restored, strengthen your brother. So Jesus gave him an appointment, what to do. So we can see here, Jesus, you know, did not point. Now, Jesus did tell him that you deny me three times, but he did not punish him or crush uh, his, you know, his uh, importance by saying, you know, you're going to deny me three times. How can you do that? Jesus did not do that. He did not. You know, he did not uh, uh, crush his, uh, his feelings. Uh, instead, he motivates him. When you are restored, strengthen your brother. So when people, they are motivated by the law, they, they will always say, I'm not well enough. I have not read the Bible enough. I have not prayed enough. I have not done evangelism enough. I have not helped the church grow enough. And they will always look at those things. Instead of looking at God is doing the ministry, it's God's ministry. Now, it doesn't mean that we have God's grace, therefore I, I'll be lazy. No, we're not lazy. But we say when we are serving God with diligence, God is very happy with me. So I'm happy to serve God with more diligence. And then by grace, then the person with a sense of accomplishment because anything we do for God, even a cup of cold water, God will remember, God will reward, so, so then we can be living uh, with confidence. And then the fourth point, uh, motivated by law, would like to compare. They would like to compare with other people and say, I'm doing better than you, and you're not doing so well. And then 
but motivated, motivated by grace, people would praise other people and say, well, you have worked hard, you have improved. So they would see God's work in their life and say, you are improving with the help of God. And I thank God for that, that you are improving. And the fifth point, that people motivated by the law likes to compete with people and they like to say, I'm better than you and, and, and uh, cut down other people. And then motivated by grace, he would want to help people that he says, you know, when I help you, then God is very happy with me, and I'm, when I help you, then I'm helping myself. And then sixth point, critical of self and others. Then they would criticize themselves and criticize other people and say, you did not do well enough, you know. So I ask you, I encourage you to examine your preaching. Do you very often, you know, always telling the people you're sinful, you haven't obeyed God to motivate people? You know, that's one way to motivate. But if you just tell people, you're not doing so well, you're not diligent, you're sinning, you know, now we can point out the sins of people. That's no problem. But we should motivate them to obey by the grace of God. Instead of saying, now God wants to punish you, so you must repent. That is motivated by the law. But how do we motivate by God's grace? We can tell them, yes. I see your sins and God wants to restore you and then whenever you repent God is very happy and when you obey him he is very happy and he will bless you and he'll give you strength now at the same time we can warn people so pay attention if any sinful thoughts come into your mind don't follow the sins the sinful don't follow the sinful thoughts because the sinful thoughts are destructive it will destroy your life it will cause problems in your life it would it can ruin your family, ruin your future, ruin the plan of God in your life. So, but when you repent and say, I want to trust in God, then God is very happy. So instead of saying, motivating people by the law, saying, uh, you, if you don't obey, if you don't repent, then God will punish you. And you, 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 know, you are tearing down your life. So that's, that's just uh, uh, being critical of other people. But instead we can say, Let's turn to God and repent and trust in God. And God is very happy when we say, Lord, I need you. I depend on you. You are my help. You are my strength. You are my source of help. Then God is very happy and God will bless us. So I hope that we always motivate people with the grace of God. So I, I hope you understand the difference. Now, some people say, well, if we motivate motivated by grace then people will be lazy they will say well okay I have God's grace so it doesn't matter now listen to me when I'm motivating by grace and I have a balance of grace and law it doesn't mean I would say it doesn't matter if you sin I would say it matters I'll explain later it matters because Satan will come to steal kill and destroy when you sin any single sin can ruin a person's life. For instance, if a person gets very angry and he yells at the people around him, he could lose the trust of the people. And if he's a pastor, he could lose the trust of his people and then it can cause damage to the church, cause damage to his ministry, even one sin. Now, this doesn't mean that we live in fear, but we say, I know that sins are destructive. Therefore, whenever I have any sinful thoughts, I'll take care of that immediately. Immediately, I will take care of my sins. Immediately, I will repent. And God is very happy with me. And I start to obey, and God is very happy with me. So, I know the consequences of sin. And I know God is helping me, and He's happy with me whenever I obey Him. Then, I am happy to obey Him. So, I have the law, but the law, the motivation by the law is small in my heart. Now, what, what does that mean? The main motivation is God's grace. He is happy with me, me whenever I obey Him. God is happy with me whenever I serve Him. So that is motivation by grace. That is the main motivation. I do have a motivation by the law, but it's much, much smaller that I would tell myself if I sin, any single sin can destroy my life. Any single sin can bring destruction. Of course, not every sin will bring a total destruction to the life. 
But if we continue to sin, it can bring more and more destruction. But I am aware that any sinful thoughts, any lustful thoughts, if I look at a woman with lust, that can cause a lot of damage. Now, how can it bring a lot of damage? First, it, you know, it caused me to lose my clear conscience, lose the joy, and then God is not uh, very pleased with me. And then also, um, it can, you know, people can lose trust in us if we look at a woman lustfully. People can tell that. So we want to take care of our sins and say, Lord, please forgive me. Please wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. I, I need your help and I'm happy to obey you. Then God is very happy. So I hope you discern the difference and change that love, you know, the, the thought under the law in our mind that God's grace motivates people more. See, for myself, I'm motivated to obey God all the time. I'm motivated to serve God all the time. You know, I'm actually I'm quite busy with my ministry. I have because I have many different ministry now in my hand and I'm more motivated to do it. I don't feel pressure. And actually I don't get paid for any of this and I'm happy to do it. And every time I do it, I'm very happy. So I hope that you all will be like that and you know uh, that I'm, I know that God is happy with what I do and then when I know sins are destructive therefore any sin I will take care of that's how I live and then I know that God is happy with my life okay so now how can we uh, be motivated by God's grace and His nature now I have a preaching method called God's nature preaching method that this is biblical this is what God wants us to do uh, in first and in second Peter 1 4 uh, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so you know all this grace this exceedingly grace and precious promises that have been given to us that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature that we can partake in his God's divine nature what what is this uh, what are the divine natures of God he has these natures are his peace his love his kindness his goodness his patience his wisdom his power his authority uh, all these are his divine nature so when we trust in God and love God and obey Him, then we live in this love all the time. Then we live in, you know, live under God's grace all the time. We can enjoy God all the time. That we, we live in His divine nature and we partake of His divine nature, His love and peace and joy. And His divine nature will show through our life that we'll have peace and joy at the same time, we have wisdom and authority and power. We have authority. I know that God is happy with me. I know that the words I speak according to the Bible is, uh, is supported by the Bible. It's biblical. It has authority. You know, what I said about motivation by grace is from the Bible. It's not from me. For instance, you see Jesus teaching uh, on a, a, a Sermon on the Mount. He started with the beatitude, the blessings. It's always saying, when you obey me, these are the blessings. Okay, so these are God's nature that we say, well, this is so wonderful. God's love, His care, His acceptance, His holiness and justice are also very beautiful because in heaven there is no more sin and it's always holy. And heaven is beautiful, beautiful because there is no sin and it's always holiness and God appreciates us and lift us lift up people he, he appreciates and lift up people he's happy with us when we obey him and follow him and God's wisdom and power and plan and God works in all things for our good okay and then Jesus calls us uh, uh, his children and cares about us so this this is grace 